Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Are you ready for some high adventure? Coming up next on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. And now, episode 245. Tick. Talk. A bomb? Are you sure that's what he said? That's affirmative. He said there's a bomb on the shuttle. What's this about a bomb? Send those three back to the shuttle. Well, we'll go and check it out. If it is a bomb, have Georgia standing by. We'll get its markings to her and maybe she can help us defuse it. That's doable. So what do we do if we can't defuse it? There's a hazardous cargo waste chute on the port side. It'll be between the two shuttles. Dump it and evacuate. Okay, we're on our way. Listen, be ready to evacuate on my command. Captain Tam, when they leave, secure the door. That's affirmative. Like I said earlier, tick tock, tick tock, that's the ending of the clock. <laughs> Don't see why you think that's funny. If it explodes, you'll be dead too. Yes, but unlike us, your people fear death. We embrace it, especially if our enemy dies with us. I thought only Hongans thought like that. Hongans. Those pathetic mercenaries. All they seek is monetary units and glory for themselves. It would, however, be inconvenient for us to die at this time. We have much work to do. Inconvenient? What's that? Another word for scared? How dare you accuse the general or me of being scared? Open this cage and I'll show you scared. Calm yourself, God. We can't expect these weak 310 humans to understand. I hope for all of our sakes that your bumbling crew members can properly dispose of that bomb. Don't you worry about them, Gov. They know what they're doing. So what do we do? I don't know. Let me think. Okay. First thing we have to do is find it! it could be anywhere. Start pulling off all the panels you can. Georgia, are you picking up any signal from the shuttle that shouldn't be here? Negative. If there is a trigger mechanism, it must be mechanical. You mean like an old-fashioned wind-up clock? Any type of wind-up device. It could be a toy. I can't see Lister playing with any toy. This is crazy. We're sitting in here and it can go off any second. Well, if it does, it'll be lights out real quick. This is hopeless. We haven't got a chance. Shh! Quiet! Listen! You hear that? Yeah, yeah it's coming from over here. Gotcha! Georgia, we found the device. Stand by for description. Well, what do you guys think? I've never seen a bomb like this. It looks improvised. There's some markings over on this side. Do you, do you see them? Yeah. Georgia, I'm going to take a picture of the bomb. Take several. I will upload them from your PDA and analyze. Well, this doohickey over here looks important. Doohickey? Joe Mac, seriously? I have identified a main component of this bomb. The yellow mechanism in the center is a gravity sensor trigger. This bomb is inert in zero G. Once it senses one G, it will arm the device and start the timer. Well, could we go back to zero G to stop it? That is not an option. 
This device will not stop after the trigger is released. What storm do we have? Below the yellow mechanism, there is a small dial. Look for an arrow and the number it points to. The resolution on your photo is too low for me to identify. Got it. It looks like a seven with three lines through it. That is Hongan script. Well, that figures. So what's the bad news? How much time have we got? Based on when I started 1G, and now, I estimate one and a half standard minutes on my mark. Mark. That's not enough time. Get out of here. Both of you. I'm not going anywhere. Neither am I. Either we all go or we all stay. Both of you. Get out of here now. We're not leaving you. We're wasting precious time. Now go. I can help. I said go. But... Skip, get out or I'll throw you out. Oh, come on, Gabby. When he gets like this, there's no talking to him. Look, if I can't disarm it, I'll join you. Georgia, we need to be able to disarm this bomb. What can you tell me? You have approximately one minute and five seconds left. No, about disarming the bomb. You must remove the cover of the octagon-shaped box. I don't see any screws or bolt heads. It requires a special tool. Oh, yeah, gee, thanks, Georgie. You're a lot of help. You are welcome, Crewman Marco. Can I pry it off with a screwdriver or smash it with a hammer? The trigger is sensitive to vibrations and shock. It will most likely detonate the bomb. Well, are there any wires I can cut? There are no standards for wiring. Probability of choosing the correct wire is 20%. Marco, we'll be disengaging the servos from the ramp so it'll drop freely. Get out and we'll blow the shuttle out of the bay with the air fresher. Georgia, can I remove the bomb and use the waste disposal port? You have less than 30 seconds. There is insufficient time. Well, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Run. Open the blast doors! Ten seconds. Close them. Blowing bay doors. Rapid vertical climb. Did it blow? Well, there's your answer. Nice try, Marco. You two head to the bridge. I'll check on Captain Tam. Well, it looks like you found yourself a lunch partner. If I ate what this guy eats, I'd be comatose by now. <laughs> now you're starting to sound like Kate. Well, at least you didn't eat rabbit food. Did you have any luck yet with finding Obosky's wife? I believe she's a figment of his imagination. Something he made up. Or rage. Uh, to what end? This would have been just a few years after graduation. Maybe he was involved in another op that required undercover work. I can check for anything back then. I'll cover a 50-mile radius from his home address. Uh, any luck yet on getting his house bugged? Got my people working on it. That would be a great help. I feel pretty confident that he's in on all of this. See, I meant to ask you, did the census list her name? You should have. Yes. Her name is Mary. Mary, huh. That sounds like a safe name to use. You did check for a marriage certificate, right? Marriage certificate, divorce papers, bank accounts, credit cards, the whole works. I'm beginning to believe you're right. Mary is the figment of someone's imagination. If she's in the 2000 census, then somebody had to be playing the part. I'll keep digging. Sounds good, Scarlet. Jim, what have you heard from Houston? Captain Richards, Kate, and Kelly and Garrett are presently uh, scouting out possible targets that Bishop might hit. They know that Korsky is on his way there now. From all the intelligence has been gathered, it appears he'll make his move tomorrow. Yeah, he set Sam up in a hotel overlooking Cyrus 1 in San Antonio. Like I said, Tracy's team is currently checking out Cyrus 2 and 3. Based on what Bishop's doing with Sam, I think 2 and 3 are good targets. I, I agree. Uh, what we're not sure about is if there's another target in Houston besides 2 and 3. I think that if there is, they'd need a third person. If they want eyes on three targets, it would make sense to have a third party involved. Excuse me, I need to take this. Yeah, go ahead.
Really? Are you sure? All right, then. Check to see if there's a forwarding address. Okay, thanks. Well, that didn't sound good. Hoboski's place is empty. And when I say empty, I mean the place has been cleaned out. Well, isn't that convenient? So he's gone, vanished into thin air. You uh, gonna check with his office? I'll go do that now. Did I just hear that correctly? Obarski is missing? Now, we don't need to know for certain. All we need to know is if he's moved out of the house. He may still be here in D.C. Housing here is not that easy to come by. It's conceivable that he might have found a smaller place nearby. Yeah, Thornton's checking out his office. Maybe they know something. I don't know, Jim. It seems very strange to me that he is leaving the day before Rage plans to launch an attack on our internet. Given all of the evidence we've uncovered and his close ties to Korsky and Bishop? I know what you're thinking. It's a long shot. Maybe not. Scarlet might be on to something. Obosky is AWOL. Imagine by now, if everything went to plan, the Mercury is scattered from Titan 3 to Titan 4. A brilliant strategy, Master. Scattered? What are you talking about? I left a little present for our friends of the Mercury. A present? You mean... you mean you left something on the shuttle to destroy the Mercury? That is exactly what I mean. It was a brilliant move. A bomb that only arms itself at 1G. As soon as the Mercury hauls it on board and resumes normal gravity, a timer is set. And before they can figure out what's going on, boom! That is mass murder. Why would you do such a thing? Because we are at war. There has not been any declaration of war. As long as the Federation holds its power over us, we will fight. Besides, it is their mission to arrest us and put us away for good. If you have killed the crew of the Mercury, then there will be war, and you are not ready for that. In fact, you may have also killed your top general. He can easily be replaced. Once you implant Lord Zokar's circuit board into Master Lister, there will be no need for General Hanukkah. We can start afresh. Start afresh? With what? Rage is no more. Those glory days are gone forever. So you say, but I know better. There are many rage soldiers spread throughout the galaxy. Once they learn that Wi-Fi lives, they will join us to regain the glory that was once rage. And you could be a part of that, Doctor. You could leave that prison you call camp and join with us in the glorious resurrection of rage. Prison? I don't see any bars. No, just walls holding back monsters of a certain death. Which makes you a prisoner during the darkness. A confinement of my own choice, my dear Ursula. It is a life of isolation I could never have within the ranks of rage. That is not my concern now. My concern is for the crew of the Mercury. No, Doctor. Your only concern is planting this circuit board into my brain. I don't see how doing this will benefit you in your quest to reorganize Rage. You'll just be able to send and receive wireless signals. As I told you before, I was an organ donor for Zokar. We are compatible, a perfect match. All the neural connections to this board are intact. I will absorb his brain cells and rule as he did. And you believe this nonsense? Zokar said that after getting my kidney he craved the same drinks. I did. Imagine what we were experience sharing brain cells. Yes, disillusionment. Your imagination has gotten the best of you, Lord Lister. His thinking is clear. Once you implant the board, the leadership of Rage will once again be united. <sighs> if you say so. Well, that was interesting to listen to. You might say that. So what got into Marco? I have no idea. It totally went against his character. One minute he's cracking jokes, the next he's playing hero. So why couldn't he defuse it or jettison out of the emergency chute? 
It was totally encased and also secured to the ship. There wasn't enough time. It activated when we resumed normal gravity. It was a noble try. I'm surprised that it wasn't you in there. Believe me, Cap, I tried. Marco was quite insistent. In fact, he was ordering me and Joe Mac around like we were privates. It was rather impressive. It surprised me. It's like you said, given his jovial nature, it was something quite unexpected. So how are our two flyboys here? Stable. They're in a lot better shape than when you found them. Hey, he just opened his eyes. <coughs> Lieutenant, relax. You're aboard the Mercury. Your crewman is alive. I'm Captain Tam Fielder. This is my pilot, Gabby. Do you understand me? Yes. Were you responding to a distress call? Mayday. We responded to Mayday. Do you recognize the people on board? Uh, No. Well, that would explain why they would trust Lister. Yeah. They're too young to remember him. Bomb. Bomb. He left the bomb. Yeah, we found it. You can relax. We're all safe. Oh, oh good. Do you have any idea where they were headed? No. Get some rest. I'm cold. I'm cold. We're taking care of that. Just get some rest. Sick beta bridge. Go ahead. One of them is awake, but he's too out of it to question right now. The most we could get out of him was that there was a bomb on board, and he didn't recognize Lister or Ursula. At least they're alive. Hopefully we can get more out of those two after they recover more. Captain Tam will keep you posted. Sounds good. Are you going to need any help? I think I have it covered. There was a lot of shrapnel that hit the ship. I'm going to head up to the bridge. They should have a damage report by now. You know, it could have been a lot worse. I'm just glad you guys found that bomb. Nah, just think of it this way. If it had gone off, we wouldn't have had much time to think about it. Well, you three were in the pressurized spacesuits. If you had survived the blast, you would have survived floating in space. Until, of course, you ran out of air. Oh, great, Cap. Thanks for the comforting thought. Colonel Bishop, is everything okay? Yeah, we're all good. I've been in contact with Korsky. He's on his way to check out our three targets. Three? What, is someone going to multitask? No, I'm bringing in another player to help. I don't mean to get into your business, Colonel, but bringing in a third party this late in the game, isn't that a little risky? Normally I would say yes, but not in this case. What makes this person not a risk? I'm just thinking that it's a complicated mission, and he or she might only have a day at most to learn the mission. That would be true if they were new to the operation. Ah, I see. A silent partner has joined the fracas. Well, he's not exactly just joining. He's been a part of it all along. You might call him the conductor of this little band. So you're not the mission leader? Oh, I'm still the leader. This guy's more of a facilitator. If I need something, he pulls the strings for me. I get the picture. Maybe that's how Korsky got assigned to your unit. I can neither confirm nor deny that rule. I think you've been here too long. You're starting to sound like a politician. Somehow that doesn't sound like a compliment. I'll be leaving this afternoon. We will want your own place by 1200 hours tomorrow. I'll send you complete instructions. Be ready to go at any time after that. Any time? That covers a lot of time. (laughs) Don't worry. It won't be that long. Enjoy some room service. Within reason, of course. I'll be fine. Listen, there is one other thing I want to make clear about this operation. All right. What's that? This is your operation, not mine. Keep my name out of it. It would be frowned upon by the Hongan Tribunal for me to assist you like this. I'm glad you feel that way, Sam, because I didn't plan to include you in the credits at all. All right, then. Good luck. Tomorrow at noon. Be ready. Detective Garrett. The batter is up, the pitcher is ready, and the bullpen is warm. Excuse me? 
Well, that's code for Bishop is leaving this afternoon for Houston, and Korsky is making final preparations. And also, there's a third party ready to join. And I'm supposed to get that from a baseball inference. Well, I liked it. It sounded all spy-like. Anyway, I just talked to Bishop, and things are in motion. I'm on a stakeout right now with everyone. I'll put you on speaker. Okay, go ahead. As I was telling Detective Garrett, Bishop called me and is going to be headed your way this afternoon. He said Korsky is on his way to case out their three targets. So they are going to hit three hubs. Did he say which ones? You know the routine. It's on a need-to-know basis. And you don't need to know. You got it. Did he give you any indication how they were going to cover three targets with two people? Yeah, he's a sleeper. A sleeper? Did he say who? No. Only that this person was a facilitator who pulled strings to get things done. Like maybe getting Korsky assigned to his unit. Maybe. If he's leaving, what does he want you to do? I'll be moving into the hotel at noon tomorrow. He's going to send me specific instructions. I'll be sure to forward everything to you. Well, that narrows our window down a bit. If you don't get into position until noon and he still has to send you instructions. I believe the Cyrus Target is planning some sort of seminar. Well, that's correct. Since you don't expect anything to happen before noon, we can concentrate on the hours of the seminar. That's most likely true for your target and our third target. It would make sense for a simultaneous hit. Keep in mind that my target is purely diversionary. He wants me to let them know what agencies respond. So we can plan on these three getting hit shortly after yours does. That will give us a little lead time. Are you still planning on using electronic interference to prevent the attack? As much as possible. If it turns out to be an inside job, the interference won't do us much good. From what I gathered, their inside man will just get them access to a company computer. He's still talking about doing this remotely. So if Korsky is here and Bishop is on his way, this third person should be arriving soon. That's the impression I got. All right, Sam. Keep us posted. We'll be watching on this end. Sounds good. We'll talk later. I need to call Jim and bring him up to speed. Hey, Slugger, what's going on? Just staking out possible targets. We got a call from Sam. Bishop's on his way here, and Sam said he was told there's a third person involved. Really? Now, that's interesting. Why is that? Yeah, we've been going through records of the assignment officers at the Pentagon. We found one good suspect. He was with Korsky at Fort Drum while Bishop was in Akron. And that was the origin of the 2004 blackout. Sam said that this third person is on his way here to assist. Well, that seals it for me. This guy we found is AWOL. Lands up today. Uh, Jim? He's not AWOL anymore. He just showed up with Korsky. Does this mean that everything is coming into place for a possible collapse of the internet? Will they be able to stop Bishop? Was the Mercury badly damaged in the shuttle explosion? And will Lister make it to Titan IV to convince the doctor to perform his surgery? Find out the answers to these questions more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles, The Pentagon Connection.